Good morning, everyone. My name is Tana Sharp, and it's a joy to welcome you to Augustana today, whether you are here in person or joining us online. We acknowledge that we gather to worship the Creator on Treaty 6 territory, the traditional land of diverse indigenous peoples, including the Cree, the Dene, the Salto, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. May we continue to work towards reconciliation with the land all of its, and all of its people. Our worship is styled in the Lutheran and Anglican traditions, but open to all as we seek to celebrate and share the unconditional love of God with people of all abilities, ages, colors, <coughs> ethnicities, <coughs> sexual orientation, <coughs> or gender identities, not only as we gather in this building, but also as we engage with the community around us. This is a work in progress, and we hope that as you join us in our time of worship today, you will also join us in this mission we share. Thanks, Tannis. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to worship. We uh, just have a couple of announcements as we gather today. Um, most of them are all in your bulletin, um, so make sure you take time to read uh, through those. Um, there is um, a couple things that we want to lift up that are time sensitive. Um, I believe the Luminos annual general meeting is, is tonight at 7 p.m. And so if you want to be a part of that, that's at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. Um, and then the fundraiser that Luminos is having, their walkathon is going to take place next Saturday. Um, and so if you want to participate in that, there is a, a sign up sheet on the back bulletin board uh, outside our, our uh, worship area. On the 21st at noon, the Joy Group, Just Older Youth, yeah, uh, welcomes you to a welcome back luncheon. And so that's going to be uh, downstairs. You can bring a dessert or a salad and beverages will be, or no, sorry, bring your favorite salad. Dessert and beverages will be included. Sorry about that. Gus got to read better. Um, and then Nest is having a Middle Eastern supper on the 29th um, with a quiz night hosted by um, Pat and Vanna, uh, better known as Deborah and Mick. And uh, we give thanks for that, the work that Nest does um, in uh, refugee resettlement here in the city. Couple last things. You might have saw these on the back table, or there are some out on the coffee table. Um, we had a street fair yesterday, which Sandra's going to come in and tell us a little bit more about. Um, and we, we gave these out just a little bit of a kind of a welcome uh, invitation um, to next Sunday, which is kind of our welcome back kickoff Sunday. Um, we're going to have uh, potluck after the service, and so you're welcome to bring a dish to share. We're going to um, sign up for Sunday school, we're going to have kind of an intergenerational service and just have a, a time of fellowship together as we, we start this kind of fall season together as a church. And so if you want to take one of these and uh, if you run into someone in, during your week that you think might be interested in coming and checking out what we're, we're up to here, this is just a little bit of a card that you can give them with all of the information there. It makes it real easy. So grab a couple of those on your way out. Sandra, do you want to come and talk about, or do you want to stand and talk from there? <laughs> First of all, I would like to thank everybody who helped to make our experience of the resort on the street fair a success. And we were able to raise $1,152. Yay! That's great, over $1,000 that helps towards the building fund here. Um, but thank you so much uh, to you and to Marie and to all of the volunteers who helped set up, uh, take down, um, be hosts at the booth, um, selling things, 
uh, all of these kinds of things during the week. It took um, a lot of people <laughs> to put that together and a lot of work making all of the items, gathering all the items, pricing, sorting, all of that kind of stuff. And so thank you to your team who, who helped put all of that together. Lastly, we are in the season of creation. And uh, for these five Sundays through September and in the first Sunday of October, uh, we lift up in prayer and in our, in our uh, focus um, God's beautiful creation around us and, and focus a little bit of ways on ways that we can um, continue to be good stewards of all that God has made, um, both as communities or as individuals. And so uh, in our prayers, in some of our other pieces, um, we'll focus a little bit about on that and just remind us and give us some things to think about for the week. One of the beautiful things about being the new guy here is I find things and I don't know anything about them. But I found these beautiful banners in the sacristy, I believe made by Anne Marie. Um, and it probably with a purpose because they say growing in faith. And so I'm guessing it was a stewardship thing. No, 90th anniversary. 90th anniversary. Beautiful. I thought they looked great and they needed to come out again. And so hopefully that uh, also serves as a reminder of the season that we're in. As we uh, enter into this time of worship, I invite us to um, turn to our confession and our forgiveness in our bulletins. This season, we, um, in our scripture lessons, they're all about community and how communities function and how communities work together. And so uh, we're going to hear a lot about forgiveness and what happens when there's conflict and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so fitting that we start our time of worship um, not only asking forgiveness uh, in our own lives for the things that have gone on this week, uh, the, thing, the ways that we might have wronged those around us, but also uh, getting ourselves um, right before God in some ways and hearing God's words of forgiveness to us. And so we pray. For our unwillingness to feel the suffering of others, for our readiness to live in live comfortably with injustice. Forgive, Forgive us, God. God. For our self-righteousness that denies guilt and our self-interest that, struggle, that strangles compassion. Forgive, Forgive us, God. For our abuse of this planet and for our exploit, exploitation of its resources. Forgive us, God. For our failings in community and for our reticence to become involved. For the times that we were too eager to be better than others, when we were too rushed to care, when we were too tired to bother, when we were too preoccupied to listen, when we were too quick to act out of motives other than love. May God forgive us. May Christ renew us. And may the Spirit enable us to grow in love. Amen. Let's sing our praise to God. Praise my soul, the God of heaven, number 864 in our red books. We'll stand as we sing. <coughs>
grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And I invite you to turn and share a sign of God's peace with one another as we uh, enter into this time. Our canticle of praise is found on page 121 in the front part of your hymnal. Let us pray. Holy and creating and creative God, we sing from the depths of our sorrow and we sing from the abundance of our joy. We sing in voices separate and unique, but we also sing as in one voice as your body. And so they may the words of our mouths, whether in speech or in song, and the meditations of our hearts, whether in thoughts or in deeds, be pleasing in your sight. Amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we hear from our scriptures today. A reading from Exodus chapter 12. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark you for the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in portion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, 
a year old male, you may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter in it, it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not any of it, do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Word of God, word of life. Please join in the psalm reading the printed t- the text printed in bold. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. God's praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let them praise their maker's name with dancing. Let them sing praise with tambourine and harp. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them sing for joy on their beds. To wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is the glory for all God's faithful ones. Second reading from Romans chapter 13. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourselves. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness not in debauchery or licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Word of God, <coughs> word of life. Thanks, Thanks Tannis. I'm glad to hear that these banners, this really worked out well. 
that these banners were created for a celebration of 90 years as this people, maybe not everyone's been here for 90 years, <laughs> but that this congregation, this worshiping place of faith has been engaged in, in their lives of faith, in learning and growing, in serving in this area um, for 90 years is a beautiful thing and, and longer. What are we now, 95? More than that. What's that? 90, 94. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's, it's hard for us who are younger maybe to think about how long that actually is. But that's a long time. It's a beautiful thing. I love the banners as they depict different stages of growth. And so you can think of our congregation as it started as a small seed, as it grew a little bit more, as the hands of the people who were in that place, the pastors, the music leaders, the, the people nourished the word that was planted within us. And it grew and it grew. And sometimes there were hard years, right? Where things were stressed and the leaves fell a little too late. Where there maybe wasn't at times where it felt like there was nurture, there was moisture or enough sunshine. But it continues on. And it grows. And it grows and the people gather in this place under the tree of life, perhaps. And whose hand do you think is there in these pictures? Is it God's hand? Holding and planting and nourishing us as we grow in our lives of faith. Have you ever planted a seed in your garden or helped Maybe in your classrooms you've taken one of those beans seeds and put it in a cup with paper towel and you've watched it over the weeks as it sprouts. It's an amazing thing to watch. Amazing thing to be a part of and to be the one who maybe gets to take care of it and see it. But it's a responsibility too, right? Because if we don't tend to it, if we don't tend to the seeds, what happens? They can get all stressed out, right? They shrivel up because they don't get watered. Or they look limp because they don't get sunshine. And sometimes that's our responsibility to help with that, right? And it's just like that in our lives of faith too as God holds us and loves us and invites us to be in a relationship with both God and those people around us, we know that we have to take care of those relationships too. And when we make people mad or people make us mad, we have to say sorry and we have to maybe go to people and say, that hurt my feelings. And then we talk about it, right? And we figure out a ways forward together. Relationships can be tricky like that, right? And so we learn how to navigate them together. And what better place to do that is in a place like this where our whole premise of being together is based around the love of God that holds us fast. And for us to be a reflection of God's love to each other. And it can be hard work. The people who planted this church way back a long time ago probably didn't see all of the different things that would happen along the way. They had no idea. And we have no idea what God's going to do with us going forward in the future. But I like this last picture where we are in God's hand. 
no matter what comes. And that's something that we need to remember and hold on to. And as we work together to build, continue to build God's church and be God's people in this time and in this place, whatever that looks like, we do it with love. I think we can do that this week. Can you go into your week looking for ways that you can be one of God's people, showing love in the world around you? Do you think that you can look at ways that you can build a better relationship, a stronger relationship with your friends, with your parents, with a larger community around you, especially as you start this new school year where you're meeting all sorts of new kids and forming all sorts of new relationships? Maybe it takes us looking for those who, people in the playground who are alone and by themselves and invite them to come alongside in what we're doing. Lots of different ways. Know that as you go, God is with you. And next week as we gather, we're going to invite you to bring your backpacks to school. Or to school, to church. This is church. School's somewhere out there. But bring your backpacks. Bring them or we're going to put them up by the, the big table, the altar at the front. And we're going to bless them and we're going to put a tag on, your back that, on the backpack that reminds you that God is with you as you go throughout your day at school, as you build those relationships, as you be one of God's people in the world around you. So can you remember to bring that for next week? All right, let's pray together. Dear God, thank you that you are always with us no matter what, that you've always got our back and that you hold us firmly in the palm of your hand. From that place of security, help us to love our neighbors as you Command us and invite us that we might make uh, the lives of those around us a little bit better and that we might take care of your creation in ways that uh, uh, honor the beauty uh, of which everything was made. In Jesus' name we pray. Ways for you to participate in the life of our worship time on this, bullet, on this sh thing is um, all of the different duties that we do from ushers to communion assistants to readers and prayers and coffee set up. If you want to be a part of that, um, pick a Sunday, sign your name up. If you've already done that, you can just pass it along. Or if you don't want to do that, just pass it along. I invite you to stand for our gospel acclamation. Page 124. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 18th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, If another, another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth 
will be loosed in heaven. Again, I t truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. So honesty time today. <laughs> be honest with you this morning, it's tempting to just ignore the gospel that we just read together. Tempting because it's all about confrontation in the face of conflict, and let's face it, most of us are uncomfortable with conflict. And so yes, the irony of wanting to avoid the passage of Scripture is uh, that it's asking us to stop avoiding things, but to confront them is not lost on me. And maybe it's that I'm a Norwegian, and like, uh, one of, as one of my friends likes to joke, he says, all of you Scandinavians are just passive-aggressive conflict avoiders. You should try to be more like us Germans. We always tell it like it is. To which I usually say nothing. <laughs> until I get home. <laughs> we laugh, but yeah, we get it at the same time. Sometimes we're in, when we're in community with each other, when we're in church communities together, we foster a culture that often says that in order to belong, we must be sickly sweet to each other all the time and not rock the boat. As though we somehow can't be honest with each other and respectful at the same time and still exist in community together. Often we say nothing. And you see it in our society around us as we have disagreements about how to care for creation, how to uh, manage our resources, how to deal with different social issues that arise, we are pitted one against the other, so much so that we begin to have a dislike of the other just because we are on the different side of an agreement. We haven't learned and remembered how to have those disagreements, those conversations without, uh, with, with a level of respect and mutuality. And so sometimes we gather in community and we find it more, just easier um, to not say a thing. To let things slide until they bubble up to the top eventually. We see it most often when we're trying to accomplish something that stretches us and perhaps challenges us past our comfort zones. Be they in small things like... Um, rearranging all the furniture in the foyer or um, making bold social statements that perhaps not everyone agrees with. And like any community, there is a possibility that sooner or later people will get hurt, that people will from time to time feel left out, that relationships will break down, that people will disconnect whether they do that loudly or quietly as they leave through the side door. It happens too often in the church. It probably has even happened in the 90 years in this place from time to time. But as a community founded on the love of Jesus, we should be immune to all of this, right? Right? It shouldn't affect us, right? I think Jesus had more than a sneaking suspicion that when we gather together any group of people, be it in the church or elsewhere, there is going to be a potential for great and amazing things to happen, but also for 
total disasters and colossal messes. And probably a little bit of both all at once. And that's the reality of our live, lives as human beings. And so Jesus reminds his followers this morning in our text of the importance of not letting things go without first confronting them head on. If there's an issue, talk about it. Don't let it fester until it blows up. Take the necessary and even painful steps that are required to be reconciled with one another, if it is at all possible. Which is an easy thing to say, but a much harder thing to do. But I think that Jesus knows that relationships are just too important to throw away. We've invested a lot of ourselves in them. And as such, they require hard work, they require commitment, and above all, love. Something Jesus not only modeled in life, but also in death, reminding us just how far God would go to be reconciled to creation, to humanity, to us. Jesus shows us a love that is willing to jump right into the thick of it all. A love so strong that it even takes on flesh and reaches out, comes along the side and it, it stands up in those places in our lives and in our world where love seems all but forgotten, or at best a long shot. A love that doesn't avoid conflict, but sometimes even goes out of the way to create it so that something better, something healthier, something maybe more authentic might come about. This gospel, along with the reading from Romans, points to an early Christian community struggling with what it means to live in community with one another, to be faithful to God and to each other, and even though they disagree with what that means and what that might look like from time to time. Which of the commandments must we follow? How do we live up to the standards that God wants from us? What does it really mean to love our neighbor? As ourselves. I'm not sure these questions have changed for us, the same ones that they wrestled with then. And while Paul's answer to this seems to be just worry about loving each other and the rest will take care of itself, we can't help but wonder what this love will do in us and to us and into our relationships with those that we disagree with as we really begin to let that love collide with our lives. What will love ask of us? How might it change the way that we interact with one another? How will it shape not only us but our greater sense of community as we live in and celebrate that love? The reality of our world is that we are called to live in community with all sorts of different communities that have so many different purposes and different levels of commitment and authenticity. There are online communities and communities based around our hobbies. There are work-related or volunteer communities. There are school-centered communities. There are our families and the communities that, um, that connect to those. We know those can be a complex web of relationships. And some of these communities will ask us of our time and our energy. Others will demand nothing from us, and, and we, in, in return, get little back. Some are as simple as hitting a button to disconnect from while others are more complicated as our lives are intermingled in them. And the church invites us into community as well with each other, 
with our God. We are communities who are created in God's love for the purpose of love. And so I guess as I think about that, my question for us this morning is where, where in the next few weeks our scripture seems to be leading us into this reflection on the importance of our relationships. My question for us this morning is what kind of community do we want from our congregation? Why are we here? What are we hoping for when we come? Is it largely a social tie? And if so, how deep do you want that to go? Are we a social club which can be sometimes superficial, but it can be safer? Or do we want a place to explore our rich and authentic relationships and our systems of support with one another? Which is riskier? and much harder to do, but beautiful. Do we want a place that can both encourage us and and hold us accountable? Are we looking for a place where we can be honest about our hopes and our fears, about our dreams, about our anxieties? Not always finding solutions, but knowing that there's people who will walk with us. Do we want somewhere where we can just blend in or are we looking for a place where we can really make a difference? Building not just a stronger church community but working together for a larger purpose to build a stronger community around us, a stronger stronger Saskatoon, a stronger Canada, a global presence. I invite you in the next few weeks to spend some time thinking about this after we leave this place. As we start up again in the fall after a nice relaxing summer, how much are we willing to invest and risk for the sake of this kind of community? And then, who might we also invite to come and to be a part of this beautiful community that we're building together. I hope that whether you're here in person or you're joining us online, that you are willing to do a bit of a deeper dive with us and build community here or expand the community that you've already been working on for the years that you have been here because I think that it's worth it. That gathering authentic community together in a world that is sometimes surface level um, or that changes so rapidly or that doesn't know how to work through struggles of life that we all face in ways that can be mutually beneficial and that are full of love. It's a special thing that we come and we gather in a place like this and center ourselves in that as God's love surrounds us. The beauty of this is that in our struggles, in our life together, Christ is with us. This Christ who formed a community around his message and the cross is right there in the middle of us, our touchstone. It is the hand that holds us throughout our journey of faith and life together. And it's beautiful. And we give thanks to God for it. And we tell others about it because maybe they need that kind of community too. And they need that kind of a God too. And so may this God alone be the glory in our lives, in our relationships, in our church, and in our world. 
this day and always. Amen. A new hymn from our Purple Books, 979, Making Their Way. Let's stand as we sing. As we uh, profess our faith today, we take these words, uh, normally we use the Nicene or the, the Apostles' Creed. Um, we're invited to use this in this time of creation, um, words that come from uh, Kelby Hansen from the Gurukul Lutheran Theological Seminary in South India. And so I invite us as we confess our faith together. We believe in God who creates all things who embraces all things, who celebrates all things, who is present in every part of the fabric of creation. We believe in God as the source of all life, who baptizes this planet with living water. We believe in Jesus Christ, the suffering one, the poor one, the malnourished one, the climate refugee, who loves and cares for this world and who suffers with it. We believe in Jesus Christ, the seed of life, who came to reconcile and renew this world and everything in it. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, who moves with God and who moves among and with us today. We believe in everlasting life in God, and we believe in the hope that one day God will put an end to death and all the destructive I invite you to be seated as we pray together.
Let us join hearts and voices together in prayer. Each short petition will end with the words, Merciful God, and you can make it the prayer your, your own by responding, Receive our prayer. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. Hold us accountable, O God. Show your church where repentance is needed and lead us in paths of intentional compassion and listening. Help us extend hands of reconciliation and care, especially in relationships with other Christians and people of other faiths. Today we entrust to you our sisters and brothers in Angola who bear the burden of hurt and poverty. Provide them abundantly with their daily bread, with all that is necessary not only to survive, but to live with dignity. We pray also for Botswana. Grant the people in this country peace and well-being. May your healing touch them each and every day, merciful God. Reveal your miracles, miracles to us, O God. Move us to cherish you as we behold the wonders of creation. Renew the seas and the soil, the forest and the creatures that live in them. Turn us to ways of living that seek Earth's thriving. And for those bringing in the crops, we pray for suitable weather, safety, and a smooth and successful harvest. Merciful God. Inspire us to lead with honor, O God. Guide judges and legislators, police and government officials to create and uphold just laws. Move us to treat all people with dignity and guide our conversations with one another. We pray also for leaders in the church, especially the bishop, clergy, and people of the ecclesiastical province of British Columbia and Yukon, and the assistant to the bishop and staff of the British Columbia Synod. Merciful God, help us comfort those who suffer, O God. Reassure any who are harmed by the wicked acts of others. Bring peace to all who are vulnerable, frightened, despairing, grieving, or sick, especially those we name in our hearts. And for Anne Jane, Audrey, Brody, Bruce, Carrie, Danielle, Deanna, Doug, Elma, Evelyn K, and Evelyn S, Gail, Jim, Karen, Corinne, Kevin, Linda, Lisa, Marlene, and Ron, Mildred, Minnie, Nori, Shelby, and Sharon and Gord, and Natalie. Guard their waking and their sleeping, merciful God. Awaken us, O God. Challenge and encourage your people to value the vocation to which each is called. We pray for all discerning new possibilities and changing employment. In all our diverse callings, teach us to love our neighbor above all else. Merciful God. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these prayers and the prayers of our heart trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Tannis. Invite us at this time to take the offering. Um, we'll pass the plates around for those of you who are online and wishing to uh, participate in, in the ministry and the, and the work of our church. Um, there are prompts on the screen for you to uh, do e-transfer or um, the Canada Helps button.
I invite you to stand and turn to page 185 as we sing. Let us pray. God of all creation, all that you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine and so nourish these gifts that we have gathered that we might be for your world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. A blessing as we leave this place today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go, my children, with my blessing. 543 in our red books. Sing as, as our blessing as we leave.
Sometimes there is hot coffee out in the entryway. Please stay and have a visit. But uh, if you've got to go, have a great day. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.